one of his clothes, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down the same road, and when he saw the man, he passed by on the other side. So too a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he traveled, came where the man was, and when he saw him, he took pity on him. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring in oil and wine. Then he put the man on his own donkey, took him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day he took out the two silver coins and gave him to the innkeeper. Look after him, he said, and when I return, I will reimburse you for any extra expense you may have. Which of these three do you think a neighbor was to the man who fell into the hands of the robbers? The expert in the law replied, the one who had mercy on him. Jesus told him, go and do likewise. Our fourth passage is in 1 John chapter 4. First John chapter four, verses seven through eleven. Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who let, everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. This is how God showed us His love among us. He sent His one and only Son into the world that we might live through Him. This is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and has sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. And our final passage now is in the Old Testament of Psalms, chapter 139. Psalms 139, verses 13 through 18. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place. When I was woven together in the depths of the earth, your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days adorned for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. How precious to me are your thoughts, O God. How vast is the sum of them. Were I to count them, they would outnumber the grains of sand. When I awake, I am still with you. That's our scripture readings this morning, and young children may be dismissed for children's church. There is no children's church this morning. Hang tight, guys. Thanks, Barry. Good to see you all this morning. Welcome here. Summer here now? You know how I know? The weeds are growing. Well, I want to talk to you this morning about love. And I find that it can be very confusing. Now, the first thing I want to make clear is that I'm talking about the love that God talks about in the Bible. And it deals directly with how you treat people, how he treats people, how we treat ourselves. Now, this is not natural. Believe it or not, I don't believe that love is natural. You have to come to know love. I believe it is a gift of God. For Romans 5 says the Holy Spirit is cast abroad in our hearts and he brings the love of God in there.
So I don't think we're responsible to create love or make love happen or whatever way you want to talk about it. But I do believe that the love that 1 Corinthians 13 talks about, love is patient, love is kind, comes from God. Now we are fortunate if we have parents that love us. And we know that because of how they treat us. But I don't know which comes first. We're told in the Bible we're supposed to love God. We're told in the Bible we're supposed to love our brother and our neighbor. We're told in the Bible we're supposed to love ourselves. And I don't know which end to start with. (laughs) I think I'll start with loving ourselves. And I think that that becomes a difficult task for many, many people. Because in the process of living, growing up and living... They they go through experiences that don't cause them to love. They go through hurtful experiences. Demeaning experiences. And that makes love have a real challenge. The sad thing about it is that a person who has gone through that kind of an experience as a child is filled with anger. I think there's lots of angry people today. They didn't like the way they were raised, so they're mad about that. They didn't like what has happened to them as a teenager in school. And they're mad about that. They don't, they don't like what's happened to them in the, in the world where they, they tried to make a living. And they're mad about that. And about the time they got used to living with somebody, they died. And they're mad about that. There's a lot of anger in this world. And anger makes love impossible. If you're here this morning and carrying around a good amount of anger, may I suggest you do something about it? You can't change what's happened in the past. So try to let that go. (coughs) By thinking of other things. And you do have a will that can take you to that place. But how do I love myself when I hurt? How do I love myself when I fail? How do I love myself when I don't like the way I look? And I have found it true that very, very few even children like the way they look. You know, you used to teach school and have pictures in school. Day comes and you pass out all those pictures we're taking to school. Oh, may I see your pictures? <laughs> they don't want to show you their picture. They don't think they look like that. When I get up and go look in the mirror in the morning, I don't look like that. We just went to a wedding with my grandson. They took some pictures with me in it. I don't look like that. I don't know who that was.
and I like myself. I don't look like, I don't like what I look like. I wish I looked like some of these strapping young people about 20 years old, 30 years old that are like Tyler. I admire him. (laughs) I've got grandsons that are just snapping men. But I don't look like that, do I? No, I don't. But you know what? Then I have to make a decision. Am I who I look like? Or am I somebody else? And I find that the answer to that is that I am somebody else. In my spirit, I don't look like that. When I just casually think of myself, I don't think of myself as looking like that. I think of myself as looking like I looked when I was 20 years old. You see, my spirit has not grown old. Your spirit doesn't grow old. Your spirit can be just as jumping and free when you're my age as when you're younger. And I truly believe we need to learn to love ourselves. And the primary reason for that is because we are who God made. We are God's special creation. And he, knowing what he knows, made me like this. I can be happy about that. You mean his thoughts about me are so great that he took care and how I was made in my mother's womb? Yeah. You mean he cares about the personality I got? Yeah. The mentality, intelligence, oh yeah. He knows everything about me. How great is the sum of your thoughts for me, O oh Lord. He made me this way. He doesn't make junk, does he? Have you ever realized that? God doesn't make junk. We create junk, but God doesn't make junk. He makes the apple of his eye. He makes people who he dearly loves. And with loving kindness, he draws them to himself. And we can learn to love ourselves. And walk freely in this subject of love. It can be scary, you know. It can be scary. You can even be afraid of somebody's going to treat you with abuse or you can feel like it's out of control. And you know what? When you start to live in love with God and with others, it's scary because you don't see the end of it. You don't see a limit. His love hath no limit. His grace hath no measure. It is so great And I'm involved. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I can love myself. Have to think about it. (laughs) Have to focus on it. But we can love ourselves. And I believe it's necessary... If we're going to love anybody else, including God. We should love our neighbor. In fact, the Bible says that's the way we can tell if you're a Christian. If you love your neighbor. Love one to another. What does that mean? Well, Jesus told us a story about the man that was caught with robbers, right? Right? man came along and helped him out of the ditch and treated him and took him and put him up in an inn. Who's my neighbor? The person I see in need and the person I can help. And I do it. The 
There's a lot of people in need today. We just invited a young couple into our place to live for a while. They were living in their car. Had a job. No place to stay. No place to cook. No place to sleep except in their car. I sleep quite freely in our car, but I wouldn't want to sleep in there all the time. When Bonnie's driving down the road, she'll look over there and say, Oh, dear me, he's gone again. So the Lord just directed them to us, and it's the sweetest. Everything so far is just plus, plus, plus. Because not only does the Bible say it, it's an actual fact that when you treat strangers with love, you treat angels unawares. Because you see the beauty that God has placed in those people. And it blesses you, makes you feel good. Makes you feel good. But for you to love your neighbor and your (coughs) whoever, you've got to do something for them. You can't just sit there in your house and say, I love you, as the car goes by. Or as you meet them on the street. You have to ask them if there's something you can do for you. And I'm blessed. I have people that ask me that. I really appreciate that. Because it's as we do things for each other, we experience love. As we do things for each other, we experience love. And it's a decision. You know, that Samaritan going down there to Jericho saw that guy over there in the ditch. He could have passed on by as some of those other fellows did, but he didn't. He made the decision to stop, interrupt his schedule, spend his money, and help that man. I had a car drive on our driveway this week. People got out of that car. They don't know who they are. Who do you think that is? They came walking up to the front door. Bonnie went to the front door and looked at him, and the expression on her face said very loudly, I don't know you. And he said, I'm Ken. I'm Ken Bybee. Now, I didn't hear that. So he walked into the living room. And the closer he got to me, the more I tried to figure out who in this world is this man. And then I saw who it was. I went through the files fast enough before I found him. We knew he and his wife 30 years ago, 25 years ago. They were very good friends, lived by us on Highland Flats. We lived in a teepee at that time. Didn't have anything else to live in. And he would come and see us in the morning. Now, you don't knock on the door of a teepee. So to let us know he was coming, he'd just start whistling about 100 feet away. We'd say, oh, here comes Ken. And he'd come and sit down and make a fire in her stove and talk to us until it got warm in there, and then he'd get up and go home. He had to walk. I don't know, half a mile to do that? Does he bless our souls? (laughs) 
He just retired from the Navy as a, I mean the Air Force as a lieutenant colonel. Is that a, is that a, yeah, is that right? Anyway, so he spent his whole life in the Air Force. And uh, deeply spiritually, walking well with God. And it was so much fun to be with him and see him. He won his way into our hearts by what he did. One day he came to us and he said, I got a dead goat. Milk goat. I have to have the milk. What's got to do? So we went over and boy, that goat was flat out. I mean, I said, well, let's load it and pick it and see if we can go to the vet and see what's wrong. So we took it down to the vet and the vet shot it full of everything he could think of. And we went back home. The next day, the goat was up on her feet. We did that for him. You see, if you do things for each other, you show each other that you love them. And that's the way it's done. Oh, you can embellish it by sending flowers and candy and any other gifts that you think they might like. But it doesn't mean anything compared to giving you a ride to town giving you a place to stay. Makes sense. So now we got through loving ourselves. I hope you're all in good shape there now. And we figure out how we're going to love other people. And now how are we going to love God? How can I know him? That takes faith. That takes faith. We have to believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. So we need to read the Bible where we can read about him and believe it. Don't just say, well, that sounds kind of interesting. Might be true. And it tells us there that God loves us so much that he gave his son. For God so loved the world that he gave his son. That whosoever believeth on him should not perish but have eternal life. Wow. God made it possible for me a sinner deserving of death because I cannot come up to his standard. I'm so selfish and so self-centered. He made it possible for me to be forgiven, to be set free from condemnation, to be accepted in his family, to be given a promise of eternal life in heaven. Jesus making that possible when he went to the cross. Giving his all, his life for me, for you. What has he done for you? Well, if you by faith have not received him and not accepted that, he's not done anything for you, as far as you're concerned. But if you by faith have reached out to him, and you can do that, that's one ability that we all have. If you by faith can reach out to him and accept him as your very own, say, Lord, (laughs) thank you for dying for me. Thank you for giving my sin. Thank you, Father, for asking me to come into your family. I trust you, Lord. Help me. Help me, Jesus. Your heart will open up a little bit. And the more you understand... What he's done for you, the more you love him.
When I look out the window at our house and see our yard and beyond and the mountains and the trees, I love him because he planted that all for me. Didn't know that before I moved there. But. Made it possible for me to live where I do. Made it possible for me to have the wife I do. The family that I do. Wow, I can rack it up until you would get tired of listening. But I'll tell you, everything speaks to me. God loves you, Lowell. He wants the very best for you. And I'm not going to quit trying to give you the very best for you. So take hope. Take hope. Don't give up. I'm still here. And I can show you the way through the wilderness. I can come and take your hand and lead you through the valley, lead you over the mountain. And I can take care of all of your needs. How can I help but love him? And the longer I serve him, the sweeter he grows. Heavenly Father, I thank you for the privilege of knowing you. I thank you, Father, for your great love that has moved into my heart and encompassed me, surrounded me. I thank you for that happened to everybody here. Everybody here that's reached out in faith to you and believed what you told them has experienced the very same thing because, Father, you're very special to each one. You know each one's name. You know each one's experience. You made them. For this we praise you. We thank you. Father, we can look around and see that this world is desperately in need of love. This whole world has fallen into the ditch. And it's hurting bad. Fill us with love, O Lord, we pray. That we might reach out and do our little part to lift the burden, to ease the pain, to cure the soul, To cure the sore. And most of all help us to love you. And love others. And love ourselves. And we ask this in Jesus name. Amen.